It would appear that the morphological origins of the breed have ancient roots and derive from the crossbreeding of the Roman Molossians with shepherd dogs present in the area when the Romans, having crossed the Alps and gone through Switzerland, settled in the fertile green Germanic countryside, founding the city that later gave the breed its name. Naturally, as for all the oldest breeds, it is very difficult to be precise regarding its origins when they are lost in the dawning of civilizations. Very few signs and various hypotheses exist, and there are also several points of view concerning the Rottweiler. Some support the involvement of the ancient Tibetan Mastiff, a Molossian which in more recent times to those we discussed is thought to have arrived in Germany as a result of the Huns, a barbaric race of probable Asian origin. Others support the breed's direct derivation from a dog of cattlemen of nearby Switzerland. Also the Celts seem involved in the formation of the Rottweil breed with the Molossians which followed them during their migrations. The latter hypothesis is supported by some remains found in Munich relating to a settlement of the Celts dating back to the 5th century BC. One is unable therefore to state with certainty which of these Molossians is the direct predecessor but the most rational opinion is thus the one according to which more than one of them contributed to form the breed, the form that began to take shape and become recognizable at the time of the blossoming of the town of Rottweil. The clearest records in this respect are some inscriptions of the era in which the Rottweiler already had its own physiognomy and already had links with the German city. In these inscriptions, the ancestor of the modern Rotti people is depicted with a leather sack round his neck that contained the day's earnings of his herdsmen. Besides looking after the earnings and its master, the powerful Molossian also had to guide and protect the herds of livestock during their movements through the countryside and the overnight stays in open areas that were often treacherous and associated with bad company until their arrival in the areas of cattle farming and livestock markets. This was precisely the Rottweil area, which was a big and important livestock and butchery market at the time. The butchers of the era also used these powerful dogs to pull their carts of butchered meats and protect their goods and earnings. This is precisely why at that time the dog came to be known as the Metzgerhund, or butcher's dog. Its use as a guardian and herd dog lasted until the start of the century, when to promote railway transport, the shifting of herds by land was forbidden. Then the breed risked extinction. Its salvation derived from its sublime traits of fearless guardian and protector that attracted the attention of German soldiers who included it in their war plans. The German and Austrian armies and later on the police used it actively and in the first half of the 1900s therefore the breed was diffused in Europe, mainly as an assistant performing tasks of a military nature. If this contributed to the breed's salvation, it also contributed, however, to the alteration of its character traits, since, given the wartime needs in selecting the breed, enhancement of the aggressive attitudes of dominance, constitution and temperament was desired, while omitting and lessening the opposite and balancing attitudes of docility and tameness. Fortunately, there have been some enthusiasts who instead gave the Rottweil dog a civil position in their homes and who correspondingly selected them, trying to maintain its original characteristics that envisage a strong and brave but balanced dog and that, if managed wisely, knows how to be tame inside its own family group. The first club of the breed was founded in Germany in 1907. The purpose of the club was to push breeders to select seriously both in terms of morphology as well as the protection of the personality characteristics. It is precisely for the preservation of natural attitudes and character traits, in addition to physical health, that the by now popular dog shows have been supported by a work test for many years. The Rottweiler belongs to Group 2, thus defined, dogs of Pinscher and Schnauzer, Molossian and Swiss cattleman type. Instead, by definition of the standard, that which deserves particular attention belongs to the type work dog, watch dog and guard dog. Work dog means that the dog is genetically predisposed and built both physically as well as in character terms to have a strong work attitude. The need to have clear tasks within a pack, to have a close collaborative relationship with a leader. Its mind must be fully formed and stimulated by a close emotional relationship but also an executive attitude must be defined and worked with a strong and sporting obedience that will develop it and satisfy the natural predisposition of which the dog is genetically endowed. 
watchdog and guard dog means that the dog has an acute sense of possession of its pack and of things it thinks are his, and a strong propensity in identifying territory as his. This results in it being jealous and very protective of its pack and its possessions, and showing hostile behaviour towards strangers who approach territory which the dog considers as its own, and will show its intent to control with all its strength, fearlessness and dominance. The Rottweiler is a medium-large to large-sized dog, strong, neither stocky nor lean, nor hound-like, nor high on its limbs. The exact proportions of its structure require it to be compact and powerful, evoking great strength, elasticity and stamina. The length of the torso measured from the point of the sternum to the ischiatic protuberance should not exceed the height of the withers by more than 15%. It descends from sociable and pacific stock and by nature loves children. It is affectionate, obedient, trainable and loves working. Its imposing appearance gives some indication of its origins. Its behavior is sure, strong-nerved and intrepid. It is always vigilant and attentive to its surroundings. Head. Cranium. Of average length, wide cranium between the ears. The frontal bone viewed from the side is only moderately convex. The occiput is well developed without protruding excessively. Stop. Pronounced nasofrontal stop. Physiognomy. Nose. The nasal channel is straight, wide at the base and with moderate tapering. The well-shaped nose is more wide than rounded, always black, with proportionately large nostrils. Muzzle. Should never be long or short compared to the cranium. Lips. Black, adherent, with closed commissura laborium oris. The gums should be dark. Jaw. Both the upper as well as the lower jaw should be strong and wide. Cheeks, pronounced zygomatic arches. Dentition, full 42 teeth, strong, with the upper incisors having a scissor-type closure over those of the lower jaw. Eyes, medium-large, slanting, of dark brown colour, with very adherent eyelids. Ears, medium-large, hanging, triangular, attached high up and well distanced from each other. Well-inserted ears, which, when turned forwards, will confer greater width to the cranium. Neck, powerful, moderately long, very muscular, slightly arched, lean, without dewlap or slack skin under the throat. Torso, dorsal line, straight, strong, solid. Renal area, short, strong and deep. Crupper, wide of average length, slightly inclined, neither straight nor steep. Chest, spacious, wide and deep, approximately 50% of the height of the dog at the withers, with well-developed chest and well-hooped ribs. Abdomen, unretracted sides. Tail, natural and extension of the upper line, hanging when at rest. Limbs, front. On the whole, the front limbs viewed from the front are straight and not narrowing. Viewed from the side, the limb is straight. The angulation of the shoulder should be around 45 degrees. Shoulder, sturdy. Humerus, very adherent to the torso. Foreleg, vigorously developed and muscular. Metocarpo, slightly elastic, strong and not rigid. Feet, round closed digits and well arched hard plantar. Short, black and strong claws. Rear, on the whole viewed from behind, the rear limbs are straight and not closed. In the resting position, the joint between the thigh and the leg forms an obtuse angle. Thigh, of average length, wide and very muscular. Leg, long, strong and with wide musculature, vigorous, with strong tendons, well angled, not rigid. Feet, slightly longer than at the front, equally compact, arched with strong digits, without dew claws. Movement, the Rottweiler is a trotter. The dorsal line remains solid and relatively still. The gait is harmonious, sure, powerful and smooth with a good stride. Skin. The skin on the head is taut, but slight lines can form when the dog is attentive. Coat. Quality. It is made up of hair and underfur. The hair is of average length, hard,